Well, it is 1230 Eastern, so I'm going to get started because we have a lot to get through in this next hour, and I don't want to take a ton of time away from our incredible speaker who's here with us. But I want to welcome everybody, first of all, to day three of ProCon. I hope your experience has been energizing, fun, and amazing. It's great to see some faces that I've seen along the way already over these last couple of days. Great to see many new faces. For those who don't know me, I'm Jen Namlet. I'm the Chief Development Officer at JCC Association, and I'm very excited to welcome you to this enrichment elective called Everyone's a Fundraiser, How to Tell Your Story for Peak Effect, and you are in for a real treat, and I promise you're going to learn a lot. As you've heard from many sessions, I'm going to repeat a couple of things that I know you're already aware of. One, this session is being recorded. We know that some of you wish not to be recorded and you can certainly turn your cameras off. So if you're comfortable, we would love to see your faces because this is as close to being together as we really get to feel uh, since we're doing this virtually. So we encourage you to do that. I wanna welcome my colleague from JCC Association, Annette McCann, our Director of Development. You will see both of us as host and co-host. If there's anything that you need from either of us during the session, please feel free to reach out. Uh, through the chat, and you will see Annette actually as part of our presentation a little bit later. Um, I also just want to uh, remind everybody that we are working hard to make sure that everybody at ProCon feels included and welcomed. And so if you haven't already, one, I would ask that you please change your name next to your name. Please add your JCC or CAMP affiliation so our speakers know where you're you're dialing in from. And if you're comfortable, you can certainly add your personal pronouns. We have also enabled closed captioning and that's something that you can turn off if you'd like to at your bottom bar. Um, one final reminder before I begin the introduction, which is that we are all here at ProCon because of our very, very generous sponsors. Thank you to all of you who have already visited our virtual vendor hall. You'll have a chance again later today, but we are so grateful for our sponsors who really made all of this happen. So now I'm gonna stop with the announcements and introduce a good friend, Liz Naganzi and her colleague Coco, who is her right hand and joining us to help on the back end with a couple of things. Liz is the CEO of Liz Naganzi Transforms and the International Social Impact Institute. I encourage you to read her bio on SpotMe if you haven't already. She's a coach, an educator, a teacher, a social entrepreneur, a speaker. Annette has known Liz for some time. Actually, Annette was fortunate enough to take a class with Liz as her educator. I've gotten to know Liz over these last couple of weeks, and I can tell you she's brilliant. She has learned so much about our movement and is so excited to be here with us. So with that, Liz, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Wow, thank you. The check's in the mail. That was a great intro. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, I'm really thrilled to, to, to have you with us. I know that you are 3000 strong. I know that this has been a very powerful experience for you. And I love the fact that despite the fact that COVID has been so horrible in so many different ways, that it actually has created an opportunity for 3000 of you to be able to participate in this conference, thereby in, um, in increasing the, the learning for, throughout the whole JCC movement. I am going to go in and jump into my, my presentation. You're going to find that my presentation is very, 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 very um, uh, interactive. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and ask you a question. I want to know what are the three words that describe the role you play in J fundraising for your JCC? And I know that you represent lots of different parts of your JCC movement, but I want to hear from you in your own words. You can either click the QR code here. I'm sorry, not the, uh, you can either scan the QR code or you can type slido.com and type the number in and Coco's also gonna share it with you. And we're gonna be able to see your answers live when Coco goes ahead and shares her screen with the live responses. If you couldn't go ahead and do so, Coco. Great. Connector, okay. What else? Let's see, three words that describe your role in fundraising for your JCC. Okay, your facilitator, okay. Promoting, communicating, team member, young, new, okay. Promoting, communicate, analyst, 
connector. Because a lot of your connectors, I love the word connectors. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a definitely a connector myself. Uh, and uh, connecting, connectors are really important in fundraising because it's all about relationships. Okay, steward. All right, you're a team member. You're a storyteller. Yes, we need to be able to tell great stories. Someone wrote, Lee wrote, um that they are on an advocate okay strategic planner the first step so you're maybe the one who opens the door writer programming you provide compassion you're the cat herder we need cat herders absolutely uh we've got trainers we've got a leader um we have someone who's a researcher someone who promotes uh someone who's responsible for email marketing we've got analysts uh, and, and so on and so forth. So this is great. So it seems to me like we have a lot of folks who really kind of see their, they see the different points that they, um, or their contributions they make to fundraising. And so mitzvah, mitzvah provider is very important. Absolutely. Got to celebrate. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and continue on and we're, we will capture all of this information. We'll be sharing the presentation from today, and we're going to do have a green screen grab, a screenshot of all of uh, your responses um, in, included in the in the presentation that's shared with you. But this is wonderful to see that all of you kind of are able to get a sense for your, the role that you play. So let me go ahead and go back to my presentation and tell you a little bit about how you can connect with me on social media. I'm at Liz and Gonzi on pretty much every social media. Um, channel. So please connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. And here's what we're going to be doing. I didn't have 18 points, but I do have nine. So today's topics are, we're going to have a reflection, which we just had, uh, then we're going to do, uh, go through my story, we'll have another reflection exercise, then we'll go through your story. Uh, then we'll talk about, um, we'll do another reflection exercise, and we'll talk about crafting your story, another reflection, we'll go into next steps, and then reflection. So um, it's a lot, it's a very interactive type of presentation, so that you don't feel like I'm just talking at you. And I can tell you, I don't talk to people, I like to have a shared learning experience. So I absolutely must thank Jen and Annette for well welcoming me, as well as the JCC and Association North America, and all of you who are with us today, because without you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you for this opportunity to be of service to you. Let me tell you a little bit of my story. My story is quite long, but let me give you some of the highlights that I think are relevant for today's conversation. Um, so I've been working for almost two decades, helping organizations and people to tell their stories. And so here are some snapshots of different ways I've done so. Um, I had a consulting firm um, between 2001 and 2012, uh, with which I worked through which I worked with a lot of different organizations, both here in the U.S. and internationally, helping them with their marketing, with their uh, fundraising, uh, and a lot of it was a sort of event based. So this is an example of um, you know helping an organization, Susan G. Komen for the Cure, which maybe many of you have probably heard of. This is the North Jersey affiliate, and they have this event called the Pink Tie Ball, and we completely re branded it um, so they became a green ball and we brought them online and this is in 2007 when folks were really not talking about online but we saved them a lot of money by doing so but it was really helping them to convey how they were tied in with sort of that the the new um the new thinking around sustainability um, I also teach at digital at digital storytelling innovation and fundraising at NYU, and I've been there since 2009. I was hired by the great fundraising woman of uh, leader, the late great Naomi Levine, who uh, raised three billion dollars for New York University, under whom I learned quite a bit about fundraising. Um, and then uh, I also, through my consulting firm, um, we had a, an opportunity to rebrand Cornell's. Um, Hospitality Icon and Innovator Awards, which is one of the kind of key, key events in the, in the Cornell year. And this photograph is with Chuck Feeney, who is um, the largest individual contributor to Cornell, and he's actually been given a lot to the world. And he's someone who um, we honored through the events um, when I rebranded the event. And about six months later, he contributed $350 million to Cornell University that enabled them to be able to uh, receive, to uh, get the bid to open up a campus on Roosevelt Island in New York. So uh, that's some of the wonderful people I get to meet in the work I do. Between 2014 and 2018, I had the honor of being the turnaround CEO of an organization based out of South Africa, the name of which is Africa Tikkun, as in Tikkun Alam. Um, and that organization was really, really, is really wonderful. It, it works, it has community centers similar to JCC's community centers um, around different parts of South Africa, serving about 20,000 
thousand children and youth directly in their families. And this is an example of a of a yearbook that we created with uh, one of our donors in, in uh, Massachusetts, June and Elliot Tatelman, who you may have heard of. Um, and they 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 actually sponsor a camp for several hundred of our children, and they wanted us to create a camp a, a sort of a yearbook for the kids because they oftentimes don't get to see themselves in photos and so this was an example of us being able to tell the Tatelman story and a philanthropy through these yearbooks and the kids that they that they help to support and then um I've create a, to, you know, do a lot of speaking for a lot of different organizations. So Candid is one of the organizations for which I've created digital storytelling to inspire and attract funders. Um, I've also done this for college students, um, most recently at Cornell. Uh, and then we also helped a, a Nelson Mandela University in South Africa uh, between February and March of this year to help them really get clear about how they're going to take their brand internationally because they're the only university in the world that will ever have the name Nelson Mandela University which they won the opportunity to have two years ago. And of course, now I'm here with you. So that's some highlights from my story and how I help others to tell theirs. Let's, let me share with you, and I, I've, I've set this up very deliberately. Just later on, you're going to see why I've, la I've laid this out for you this way, but I want you to take note of the icons to the left. So I help people to clarify, develop, and share their stories to increase their impact period. And I do so as an executive coach, speaker through my firm, Liz and Gonzi Transforms, and as an adjunct assistant professor at NYU and founder and CEO of the International Social Impact Institute. So that kind of gives you a sense of how, how, I, how I help people to clarify and develop and share their stories. And I believe that sharing your story helps others discover what you uniquely bring into this world and inspires them to support you, hire you, work with you, collaborate with, collaborate with you in whatever way you need them to. And I thank you for bringing your energy and attention to this session for me to, to help me make this a really impactful experience for you. Okay, let's now dive into your story and please remember the icons we had on the left. I'm going to ask you a question now. Here's another one. So in, in which of the following departments do you work? I'm very mindful of the fact that you have lots of different titles. You represent different um, organizations. So I want to go ahead and have Coco share this screen for us again. And in the chat, you can find the um, Slido link. But Coco, if you can go ahead and drop it in again, just in case people are just joining us, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. All righty. So we have a lot of people in marketing. Some in fundraising directly, those are the departments. We have senior leadership, programming, membership. Okay. All right. Pamela White is from fundraising. Great. All right. So majority of you are, are in that department. You're in marketing, you're in programming. We have some senior leadership. Some operations, great. And then other. Um, and whoever said whoever wrote other, I'd love for you to write for us in the um, in the chat, in the Zoom chat, what other that means. And of course, we've got the CEO, CEO. Absolutely. So we've got senior leadership right there. Okay, so it's wonderful to see the sort of the variety of folks we have. It helps me to understand where we're talking, where we're looking. We've got an executive assistant, Kelsey from uh, Tucson. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? Nice to, nice to have you with us. Okay, let, and then we've got operations development. So it's Zani, it's, oh, it's uh, an operations development. We've got volunteer services. We've got an executive assistant, Monique. Okay, we're going to capture all those. Really wonderful. Thank you for, for participating in that. And I'm going to stop sharing that. And there's a point to why we did this. We have someone who's in senior development, Angie. Thank you, Angie. Um, okay, so let's talk about how what your what your role means within the JCC movement um, experience cycle, and what and its impact on fundraising, right? So um, again, I asked you what your role was in fundraising. So obviously quite a number of you work directly in a fundraising department, but then we've got lots of you who are in different roles. And so I wanna kind of show you how, how you fit into fundraising irrespective of which department you, you live in, you work in. So this is, this is how someone experiences a JCC now physically, right? So if we're, you know, for, if any of them are, are open or they've been open, this is basically how they're going to experience your JCC. 
see. So we've got, oh, sorry, we've got discovery. So discovery is really controlled by your marketing folks. Is it's controlled by your IT folks, right? So uh, people will discover your JCC, whatever, irrespective of what type it is, um, through um, your website, right? So I've been on your website. I've been on your various social media platforms. So someone's creating the content and someone is managing the platforms in which the content sits. And so um, my ability to connect to a, an individual JCC, a camp, uh, to be able, be able to apply for a job is very much dependent on your team, your IT and your marketing team's ability to communicate the information I need at the time I need it and in a convenient way. Uh, once I do actually get to, you know, decide that I'm going to come to visit one of your sites, um, there's an arrival phase. So when I'm walking to your JCC, right, I'm going to a camp and I'm going to a, a, some kind of a facility that, you know, I'm looking at things like, um, is the environment safe? Is it, you know, is it well lit? Does it look a little bit sketchy? Uh, because again, if I'm a prospective funder and you don't know who I am, but I'm a prospective funder, um, that's really part of how I experience you. And that's my, the welcoming, the first impression that I get physically about your organization. But the first, very, very first one is actually the discovery, which is online. And then you've got registration. So when I walk into the building, is there someone there to greet me? If I come to an event, is there someone to greet me? And how do they greet me? How how do they handle that? How smooth is that? Because I'm starting, I'm creating a lot of different impressions or I'm getting a lot of impressions about what you have to offer. So the people who manage that, that desk are really, really going to be important. And then once I get into the that, that center and I'm walking around, I might be there for an interview. I might be there to have a, a, an actual donor meeting, or I might be a, a member. I might be, um, you know, young person who is using one of the facilities. Um, is, are the facilities clean and safe? Do I feel like I can move through clearly? Has this, is the space ta well taken care of? Because when someone comes to ask me, to, to, to contribute to something, I'm not going to contribute to something I don't think is of high quality. So again, those people are really going to be important. So your facilities folks are going to really make a difference in this. And then you've got the departure. So when I leave the building or if I leave your event, is there someone there to bid me farewell? Is there something in the, in the special way that I'm handled um, that maybe if, I, if I'm coming for an interview, maybe does someone walk me out uh, and the like? And so that's important to think about. And then finally, when I've left, um, and I saw this on your website. It's actually part of the best practices that on the on the um, part of the website of of JCCA, where whereby it states if you come for an interview, definitely make sure to say to send a thank you note to all the different people you spoke with. In a similar way that if someone comes to an event, someone comes for a meeting, someone works with you in some kind of way, it's really important that there's some kind of a follow up that you do. And this is really the cycle. And so the impressions are made here. So that means that every single person who's part of that, so you've got HR, you've got people who, um, you've got the IT folks, you've got membership and so on and so forth, they are all part of this, the kind of program that, programming that you do, very, very critical. So that's the physical manifestation of the JCC movement experience and how it affects fundraising and what your role is. But let's look at JCC movements, digital storytelling ecosystem. And I call this an ecosystem because this is really, these are all the different things that kind of like different elements one can find online when they're researching JCC or if they Google JCC, right? Your particular one or overall. At the center of it is the website. So it would be your website. Um, and ultimately you want all these different things or these different elements pointing back to, to um, the website and then of course the, the website pointing out. So when someone's trying to understand a little bit about your JCC, they're gonna wanna see like, you know, have you received any awards, right? Because that talks about the, the quality that's a third party endorsing what you've done. It means that you've you've really um, exceeded their expectations, exceeded, you know, expectations of the people who use your services. Um, of course, you've got rating sites, like what are people writing about you? If you were to look up your Yelp score or you look up your, you know, your Google um, score, what would that look like? The, so that's important to look at that because I look at the rating sites anytime I'm going to use anything before I go ahead and engage with any company. The next thing you want to do is look at what kind of media coverage um, your JCC is receiving. If there's any, then you want to make sure it's listed on the site because I might be wanting to look at that when I'm trying to discover whether or not you're credible. Or maybe it's the media coverage that's going to take me to the site because I may not have known that you were in Tucson, but because I watch, I, you know, watch a piece on TV or I listen to something or I read 
read something I, and I, I'm intrigued, then I have an opportunity to go to the website and engage with you. And then, of course, you've got the volunteer recruitment sites. Um, on there, you're going to be rated probably by volunteers. I know you have quite a number of volunteers. And so what, what is your profile look like on those volunteer sites? How are those volunteers rating you? Are they saying that you're great organization with which to volunteer, because that's part of the story. And then you've got your different social media platforms that you might be on. And if you've got Twitter accounts, you've got LinkedIn accounts and so on and so forth for your JCC. And then an easy one is, you know, your email signature. This is Annette's email signature, but your email signature is a very great opportunity for you to promote not only the JCC itself in terms of contact information, but as well as like any promotions or even fundraising activities or um, opportunities for people to sign up for your newsletter or to make a donation. That's a really great place to showcase. And then you've got virtual meetings that you participate in or you're hosting or any classes that you're, you're hosting. Um, that's a great way for you to really, con for people to get a sense for what your JCC is about. And so how does that process manage? Um, are, are people welcomed when they come into a, a virtual event? Um, is it very easy for them to follow the content that you're sharing? Um, are, you know, is it a really great experience that you've created for them? The next is search engines. If I Google your JCC, what am I going to find? Um, you know, I, you want to make sure that I'm finding whatever it is that you want me to know about your JCC and that there's, there's anything that's really that you can control that may not necessarily be representative that you're actually managing that. And then finally, like I said, digital thank you notes are really important for you to, uh, to, to share. They're part of your branding. They explain that this JCC cares about the people it works with. And so um, that's really the JCC movement's digital storytelling ecosystem. There may be a lot of other elements, but these are kind of the core that I, we thought would make sense for you. Let's now talk about given the context that I've just given you, what role do you now think you play in fundraising for your JCC, right? Because we've done a little bit of learning. So I wanna see if there's been any kind of a shift or an opening for you. So I'm gonna ask Coco to go ahead and uh, pull the screen up and we have the Slido link there again. And of course you can go ahead and um, take a, a photograph of the QR code and you'll be able to go ahead. So grant writing. Okay, that's someone. So what role do you now think you play in fundraising for your JCC? That's the question. You're an ambassador. Okay, so you see that you're an ambassador. Great. Uh, being an ambassador, relationship builder, positive image, grant writing, generating ideas. As a marketer, it's really about communicating, creating all kinds of impressions for visitors and members, but on a practical level, the herding cats resonates. I think you're the herding cats person before. Great. Digital thank you notes. That's you. Okay, so I get the sense that you must be sitting somewhere in um, maybe the, uh, the communications team. Okay, you're the follow-upper. Okay, good. I love that. Follow-upper is important because follow-up is very, very important. You're the relationship builder and steward. So that's the beginning part of that. Well, the relationship builder and the stewards are on both sides of that equation. Uh, finding sponsors for fitness events and creating relationships. Tying it all together. Okay, so you understand how you tie it all together. Uh, wonderful. The connector, the steward. Yes, you could catch on the, the stewardship piece of it. Um, and then you're, let's see if we covered all the pieces. Perspective visitor to user. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay, perspective visitor to user or member. Okay, so you're the one who manages, I guess the visits is what you're saying. You give, give, you give people the mechanisms by which to give. Perfect. Um, all right, so alumni engagement. So you also, alum, yeah, alumni engagement's a very important piece. Wonderful. Okay, so let me go ahead and continue on with with, with what I've got. You can con keep contributing. Like I said, we will, we will take screenshots of everything and integrate them into my presentation for you. So let's now talk about crafting your story. I've shared my story. Um, I've shared a little bit about your story, whether it's you know, within the context of the JCC, um, I know your own. So let's now go into crafting your story. So this is a framework that I use. There are lots of different storytelling frameworks out there, and they're probably a lot more complicated, but this is one that I use both when I teach uh, for nonprofit organizations how to tell their organization stories, and also when I'm teaching or coaching my clients uh, individually. And so, you know, all, ultimately, you're talking about problem, solution, impact, ask. Most times, when if you were to analyze a lot of communication that's put out there, we're really good about sort of talking about the solution, right, because that's what we do. 
it. So we're really excited about what we do. It's our, our job, but really what it, what's really, really important is the problem you solve for your stakeholder and your stakeholders in your case can be board members, donors, employees, members, parents, visitors, volunteers and youth and, and so on and so forth. And so really understanding what your role is in pro solving their problem is gonna be key. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna give you a tool at the very end of my, of my presentation for you to be able to kind of start thinking about how to tell your story in that context. And the, on May 7th, I'll have an actual session for you to work, walk through with me in the crafting of your story. But the problem is important and the impact is also important in terms of you know why what you do matters to your stakeholder. So the JCC stakeholder, but also their stakeholders, right? Because a lot of times when we talk impact, most people are, are speaking about specific numbers, right? So that's a result. But impact is really the, the um, implication of that result. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then obviously, you always have to have an ask. So whether your, your content is being um, shared in the form of a you know, your story is being shared in the form of a social media post, or it's on a website, you always have to ask for something. There's always something that you're looking for. So it's really important that um, you have those four elements. So those are key elements you have. So let me give you an example. I wanted to give you an example of what I felt was really um, the, the, the role that would typically least be uh, kind of connected to fundraising, then I'm going to walk through an example of someone who actually is in fundraising. And so here's a sample facilities manager story. So you remember I showed you the four different icons. So the problem is I, I make sure that our guests and members feel welcome and safe when they visit our JCC. I am a facilities manager who makes who takes pride in making sure everything is clean, safe, and working properly. By doing so, I help to ensure that the time our members spend in our JCC is a peaceful one in their day. Please let me know how I can help to make your visit a more comfortable one, right? So this is a this is essentially you know, the, all the different elements broken into a little pitch or kind of a, a greeting to someone who's a facilities manager who might be speaking to one of your guests or members. So I showed you the that and then I'm going to show you your digital storytelling ecosystem. So the first one was J the JCC movements. Now I'm going to show you how you fit into this because I think a lot of times we think, well, the minute we leave work, um, you know, that our relationship to our organization kind of ceases, but that's not necessarily the case. And especially not now in, in the sort of this virtual world in which we, we, we live and work. And so your private and your public life are starting to kind of fuse a little bit more. So let's be proactive about making sure that everything kind of um, aligns more effectively. So if you look at it again, at the center is a website. So it'd be your personal website if you have one or blog, uh, and then your profile on your JCC site if you have one. And then of course, you've got your own personal LinkedIn um, account or, or profile, which I hope everybody on this call has a LinkedIn profile. And if you don't, on the seventh, I'm gonna show you how to set that up. Then let's go through all the different pieces you could have. So you've got your recognition. So if you're an outstanding member of society uh, in your particular field, you would be recognized in some way. So if you're recognized on a site, that's going to pop up if I Google you. Um, if you're speaking anywhere, whether it's, you know, in your temple or if you're speaking like, you know, um, at a local sort of community event or, or, you know, whatever it may be that's not necessarily um, related to your job or even related to your job, that's going to show up. Um, if you've received any kind of media coverage or if you yourself are actually generating content and writing blogs or articles, that's something that we'll, we'll look up. And then you've got your volunteer work that you're doing that's going to show up as well. Um, any social media platforms on which you're, you're, you know, you show up. So a lot of people like to, to make their accounts private and only allow their friends to see them. So if you don't want your JCC profile or JCC affiliation to be connected to your personal profile, then you probably would want to make your accounts per, uh, private. Then you've got your personal email uh, um, signature. And in my email signatures, irrespective of if it's for my work ones or my personal ones, I always do um, integrate whatever it is I'm working on because it's an opportunity for me to share with people what I'm working on and passionate about. So you may want to consider doing that. And then your virtual meetings in which you participate. So we're, you know, if you're at a, another conference or you're doing something else, you have an opportunity to really kind of uh, show up a certain way. And people remember that, oh, that was a person from that GCC in Tucson and they were wonderful. And I really like how they, you know, how they, how they, 
did whatever they did or you know that's Marcy and oh I think Marcy works for JCC JCC must be great or, or I really love what she's doing so just when you show up anywhere you are actually even a representative of people see that that's where you're from and then if people find you online they're going to you know they're going to see a lot all of these different pieces so how do you come across and then of course the way that you correspond with people and the, and the gratitude you share with people is also a demonstration of that so the bottom line of what I'm saying to you is that um, you may be seeing all these pieces individually, but if anyone Googles you and they look up, they're going to see all of this together. And so my question is, if you say your purpose, you know, you shared what your purpose is before we started the presentation, you shared your purpose after I, I presented some content to you. Now I want to see if all of this kind of comes together for you. And if there's a problem or you don't feel that things are really um, um, in any way, if they're not really properly aligned, there's an opportunity to solve that. So let's go ahead and have you Google yourselves. So if you can go ahead and pull up a, you know, um, your browser, I want you to Google your name. And when you Google your name, make sure you, you Google it with, with quotation marks around your name, because sometimes if you don't do that, you're gonna get a lot of results that are not um, so much of yours. And if your name is very common, you might wanna include a middle initial, but just go ahead and Google your name to see if the search results in your digital storytelling ecosystem are consistent with what you've said is your purpose. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that. And of course, guess what we're going to have coming up? A Slido. <laughs> so go ahead and Google a couple of minutes. And I know you're going to, a lot of you are going to find a lot of stuff that you wouldn't, you couldn't imagine you found. One, one tip I'm going to give you is that if you really want to stay on top of this, Google has what they call Google Alerts. And maybe Coco will be able to put um, a link to Google Alerts for you. You can set up a Google Alert and every time your name comes up um, on any site, you will be alerted. You will receive an email so that you can approve it or you can just see what's going on with it. And if, the, you know, if it's something that you're excited about, then you can make sure people, more people learn about it. Or if it's something you don't really want, you can figure out how to sort of suppress it. So um, let's go ahead and see. All right. Um, I'm going to ask Coco to go ahead and show us if your Google search results were consistent with what you said as your stated as being your purpose. Coco, can you please go ahead and share? Great. Okay, so we have quite a number of people have said yes. We have some no's out there. That's okay. At least now you know, knowledge is power. So 73% um, so of you said yes, we're sticking at that number. Good, I'm glad to see that. But that's not surprising because a lot of the people who answered in terms of the roles that they play are in very external facing roles. So I would imagine people are in external facing roles like in marketing and in uh, fund fundraising development and also in senior leadership roles would probably most likely be really on top of this kind of stuff. Okay, good to see. I'm really glad to see that many of you aren't. And for the 25% of you, don't worry about it. It's something you can absolutely work on. Um, and I, again, on my during my session on the 7th, I'll be able to go ahead and, and look at that for you. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing that, Coco, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to my presentation. And now we're going to go into... Um, this is where I'm going to do a little bit of, of work with Annette. So this is Annette McCann's digital storytelling ecosystem. So element. So if we were to Google Annette, these are some of the things that would pop up. I happen to be to have asked her to help me kind of gather some of these points. But at the center of it is her JCC um, profile, right? So you see a little bit about her on her profile um, on the website. You've got um, this is actually her her own um, her email signature. So um, she. And her email signature is actually longer than this. She has the ProCon logo, but I just wanted to focus you in on this information. But so she has links to all the social media, um, social media icons for GCCA, the website, her email address, address, and so on and so forth. And I got to tell you, anytime I'm communicating with someone, if they don't have their email address or their telephone number, 
easily accessible and there's their their um, signature it's really really difficult because you're sometimes you just want to call someone and having that ability to do so is really really helpful so just want to let you know about that um, here she appears um, in her LinkedIn profile and it's clear she works for JCC uh, she speaks a little bit about what she's what she does and she speaks about her her, her job and her role but we're going to be talking a little bit more about her story when I'm going to kind of walk her through my process and then you've got um, she had a post uh, last year where she wanted to um, she participated in Giving Tuesday Now and she said that she wanted people to support a campaign for JCC so she herself um, behaves or acts as like a, a brand ambassador helping to get her network to support JCC so now this is something you can consider if you're not always already doing so and I do respect the fact that like again you might want to keep your private life and your and your um, professional life separate but if you are open to it you do have an opportunity to go ahead and share campaigns uh, here she is with her lovely family um you know sharing a little bit about uh, this was on december 10th little talking a little bit about their menorah and what they're doing around hanukkah so clearly she's very much in her identity and her private life is very much connected to jcc association of north america as well as just just jewish life in general so she it's very clear where net stands and things. So that's a, a way to look at this. And I and I think it's it's important to note, I'm gonna put it out there. No one said I should say it, but I'm gonna tell you this. My belief in what I teach is that in every organization that all the people who work for that organization should actually be donors to that organization because you can't legitimately ask someone to support your organization if you don't yourself um, function as a donor, whether it's you being a donor or getting people to donate, but it's very important because it shows that you have skin in the game. So I always say that, you know, I, I like to see if I'm speaking with an organization, I want to know what percentage of people who work for that organization are actually themselves donors. And it's not about, about the amount of money that they're giving, but they themselves are giving that's what I, I really think is important let me go on and I'm going to I'm going to welcome Annette and we're going to go through her story very quickly I will give you a link to be able to access my story crafting tool um, that you'll be able to sort of play with on your own and then if you come to my my uh, second session on May 7th I will walk you through really creating your story we'll, we'll you'll leave with your story crafted and I'll show you how to sort of integrate it into your various um, elements of your digital storytelling ecosystem so Annette if you can join me please I don't know if we can both get on screen. I can't see. Okay, I think it's the way I have my thing done. Okay. All righty. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. A little, okay. nervous. A little nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> we're among friends. You know, we're among friends. So don't don't worry about it right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share um, the the tool, and okay. we're going to walk people through it and then go through. So, um, all righty. So oh, I'm stuck. To be stuck. Give me one second. Um, why don't you speak a little bit as I do this, Annette? Sure. Hi, everyone. Annette McCann. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm the Director of Development working with Jen Mamlet at JCC Association of North America. Uh, some fun facts this is my first ProCon. So, oh, yay. <laughs> Uh, so it's been a thrilling experience. I hope all of you are enjoying uh, the sessions and everything that we've worked so hard to uh, put on these last three days. Uh, one other fun fact, Liz was my professor. I took her NYU class uh, last, <laughs> last spring. Right. We were in person and then we were not. So yeah, that, that was all, fun. Digital fundraising was very applicable <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so folks, thank you for that, Annette. No problem. Um, and thank you for inviting me. Of okay, course. so so this is the tool you'll have access to. You'll input your email address so that you can go ahead and have the once you're finished filling it out, it'll email you um, the results of what you've what you've written. Um, I've given the storytelling framework, so in case you forget it, you have it in front of you, and then the example that I created. So Annette, let's just go ahead and jump in. Um, okay. So Annette, we'll just say uh, director of development. Okay. Um, and then give me 
so this is the scenario. You have been invited to a meeting, right? This high level meeting of people, um, of ph philanthropists and, and, and fundraisers, and it doesn't really matter what, but it's, it's, it's this meeting and you're left, it's only you and the stakeholder that you've been dying to speak to um, are left on the Zoom call. Tell me who that, that stakeholder is. Um, we'll get it, go ahead and, 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 and we're gonna tell you that this person has said to you, Annette, don't get off. I wanna talk to you. I want you to tell me everything that you're doing. I wanna know everything about your role. And this is your opportunity you've been waiting for. So I want you to be ready for that. Like, this is like big time. All okay. right, I'm excited. <laughs> awesome. So who is, who is your stakeholder? Okay, um, my stakeholder is gonna be an individual donor. Okay, I'm going to make it right. easy. I'm going to make okay. it one of my children's names so I can okay. easily remember. Sophie. Sophie. Sophie the donor. Okay, I love that. Sophie's <laughs> choice. Okay, Sophie. Okay, we're going to go Sophie. Um, and so Sophie is, is Sophie, Sophie like a philanthropist? We say Sophie the philanthropist? Sure. <laughs> and um, okay, so Sophie's wanting to know everything about you. Now, Sophie's all about, you know, your philanthropist is every, like everybody else in the world is all about what's in it for me right so we start there what are the problems that you can solve for sophie um through your jcc and in your role so please share that with us three okay. three problems um and of course you've done research about her so it's not like we're of going course to blind, right yes naturally naturally yeah. of course yes um i would say sophie wants to make an impact okay sophie Sophie wants to engage with others that are have philanthropic interests just like she does. Oh, you need a third one, huh? Yep. Um, because this is fictitious, right? Sophie communicates or Sophie um does philanthropic work on a local level, maybe mm -hmm. at her local JCC, and right. JCC Association can give her a bigger platform, broader continental reach. Hey Liz, I'm just going to jump in real quick. I'm seeing a couple of notes. Can is it any? Is there a chance to make your screen bigger? Yes. Let me see if I can do that. Yep. Here. Ah, How's this? Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was trying to make the point. No, that's okay. Perfect. There we go. Uh, wait. Where am I? Okay. Reach for her philanthropy. Okay. All right. If there are any spelling mistakes, please forgive me. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. So those are the three things that you can solve for her. Fantastic. And these are great because we always have to be very donor centric, right? Because a lot of times we're thinking about like what we can do, what we're so great at, what we're excited about, but it's all about them. So now let's talk about the solution. So how do you solve, you know, Sophie's problems through your role? And what do you, you know, what do you do that makes their experience of your JCC so special, right? And, and, and so let's go into that. What's your special special sauce. What is the next special sauce here? <laughs> Interesting. Um, <laughs> I wish I knew I could package and, it then. And, and let me it. give you, and let me, and let me give you a clue. And this is everybody. This is a clue for everyone. Why th your, why is the most important thing a person is going to connect to? Why, like what, there's something in your background that attracted you to work for, for JCC. There's something about you that makes you come to work every day, other than a paycheck. What is that thing? What is that special unique uh, motivator for you okay. and, and and not just motivate but the yes the motivator and and the thing that really is that is about that makes jcc special for you and therefore your ability to create a great experience for her i well first of all i can make sophie feel good i okay. can be a welcoming friendly source um, for information and for opportunities Okay. Uh, and with that, I can give her opportunities. We said her problem was, right, she wants to make an impact. Yes. So I can give her opportunities to make that impact, whether it's uh, programs or initiatives, I guess, that JCC Association does. Um, I can give her chances to advance her problem <laughs> or solve her problem, I guess we okay. should say. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, but I want you, I want you to dig deep because I want Annette's oh, heart deep. to come okay. out. Okay. So okay. And I'm going to cheat it a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to have to really reveal that I, you did help me with this a little bit. I want to know your story from when you're a little girl and your mom. That's okay. 
That's so you're, I'm you're bringing That's up my class, my class entry is my class stuff that I submitted. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> thank you for that. Sure. M my mom uh, is a teacher and educator. And so she was home with me and my sister for many years when we were growing up, but then uh, wanted to get back into teaching and get back into the workforce. And her first job after, you know, raising my sister and I for a number of years was at a JCC. She was a nursery school teacher. Right. Uh, so I have that connection from early on when I was yeah. a kid uh, right. to the JCC. And why does JCC mean something to you now for your kids? See, because you, you, you've seen, seen that for your mom, you've seen it as a kid. And then now does it mean for your, for the next generation of your family? So it's a, it's a welcoming environment for them. Uh, okay. So I am Jewish. My husband is not. Okay. Uh, so I am constantly finding ways to sort of bring my traditions and my culture, and my experience to life okay. in a way that they would understand. And the okay. JCC does that. Okay. Uh, so let me a welcoming environment. So let me explain to you why that's important. So you remember, she said she wants you. She wants to engage with others with similar philanthropic interests, uh, and she's clearly connected to this. So it's important that you can connect to that with her, right? Because this is a personal thing for you. This is something that you that you learned about through your mom, and then as a child, and then it's for your family. So when you're speaking to her and you're explaining to her how you can solve the problem, you can say, "For me, this is personal. I've been part of this. I I myself give because you have been. You are. You have given, right? So that's that piece where you say, "I give. I believe in this so much that I give myself." That's what I'm getting at. Okay. Got it. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So friendly source for opportunities, can give opportunities to make um, an impact through programs and you yourself understand sort of, you can, you can empathize or understand the, you know, what it's like to sort of um, want to be part of some part of, part of an organization that, that aligns with your own specific interests that are very specific. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you took it to the next level. <laughs> that's the that's the point. <laughs> but here alignment with um, your values and interests. Okay, why this is important is that you see a lot of times when we communicate, when someone asks us what we do, we just go ahead and just regurgitate what was in our job description. But people aren't connecting to that. Yeah, because they want to know what your title is, but they want to know your why, and they want to know how you how your why and how and what you do differently in that role, how you approach that role is going to help them to solve their problems. That's what they're all interested in. And so if you can communicate that, you're really going to have great success, irrespective of, it doesn't have to be for just for fundraising. It's in any, any really sort, I mean, if you're dating, it, it even <laughs> kind of comes down to it, if I'm, if I'm going to just put it out there. Okay. And so, so then why does this matter to your stakeholder and what does it matter to, uh, why does this matter to JCC? That, you know, that you have this sort of alignment with her interests, that you are able to bring a wealth, create a wealthy, um, I'm sorry, welcoming and friendly source of opportunities, and um, that you understand the programming that can really align with what she's doing. Uh, so I guess I think of myself as a gateway. I'm the mm -hmm. connector, right? That was yeah. a word used by many yeah. of us. I, I can introduce her to those that have, again, similar interests and values and connect her to programs and initiatives that will uh, support her philanthropic interests as well. Okay. And why do okay. I matter to JCC? Certainly fundraising is very important. <laughs> right now for many organizations. Fundraising is important, but not just the fact that you're a fundraiser, but the fact that you're a great ambassador and the fact that you you live the JCC values. That's what matters, True. right? True. And that you can make this connection. That's what makes you valuable. Because because I'm not saying that, and I'm, I'm a fundraiser too, right? So you just because you're a fundraiser doesn't mean that you're valuable in the sense that if you don't understand really how how much you matter to the organization. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so then let's go because I'm I'm getting I'm no. getting messages that I'm like I need to wrap Sorry. up. Sorry. Okay, no, no, it's not you. Okay, so what <laughs> what are you going to ask Sophie? What is so? What do you want from Sophie? Uh, well, I want her to do all of those things. Meet me for coffee. Connect with other staff. Okay. Um, so I, so so let's choose one. How about connect with others? Connect with okay. other staff. 
Okay, so you want to connect? Okay, connect with other stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so can I can I go ahead and quickly have you help me summarize really quickly, taking all the, the elements from the top, I want you to go ahead and create a concise version of this. It's not gonna be easy. And I don't want anyone to think that it is. But I think Sorry. I want to just, I want to show people how it pulls together. And you have to work on this for a while. It's not that it doesn't just come up, you know, right away. Okay. Uh, say, so go, hi, I'm Annette. Hi, and, I'm Annette. So mm -hmm. nice to meet you. I'm director of development at JCC Association. Uh, my path here was not direct by any stretch of the imagination. I was in media and entertainment for 18 years. Uh, I didn't check the fundraising box when my guidance counselor asked me that question back in high school. Uh, but I made my way to JCC Association because uh, that I believe in what JCC Association does. I am a JCC kid. Growing up, my mom was a teacher. Uh, my sister and I felt so incredibly welcome there. And it was part of my childhood that I value tremendously. And I would love Sophie, the donor, would love you, Sophie, to meet me for coffee uh, so I can share with you some more uh, ways to connect you to JCC Association. And and other people. With and other people. And other people, yes. Okay, okay. and expand your? Uh, and, and or kind of help you to understand what's available to you on a national level, something like that. What you said. What you, one, right, yes. exactly. <laughs> but you see how it all comes together, right? And you, you know, when you put these bullets together, that's fine. You, that's just the base. And then you have to netize it, right? But that's mm -hmm. really what you start with. And then, and then that translates into what you put on your, when you rewrite your LinkedIn profile summary, you embed that a little bit so that why comes out, that a special sauce comes out. When you, you know, update your profile elsewhere, that's what you want to do. So thank you. Let's give Annette yeah. a big round of applause for helping us. Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and go back because I know I have to sort of wrap up on my end because I want to make sure that people have time to go to other things. So um, I'm going to ask you to do three things. I always make people, I, I'm, I'm one of because I teach, so this is a thing. So these are three commitments I'd like you to make. I'd like you to go ahead and register yourself as well as a colleague to participate in the, the May 7th hands-on story crafting session and you'll be receiving information about that. And when you come to that event, I wanna make sure that you come with your LinkedIn profile, maybe your JCC profile, a resume, a cover letter, wherever it is that you tell people about yourself publicly, I'd like you to bring that piece with you. And then also, um, please consider visiting my website, learn more about the coaching, training, speaking services that I can provide you or your JCC. And um, here's the link to my storytelling tool. You'll have an opportunity to work on it um, you know, in between now and the seventh, just play with it. And then when we come into the session, I will walk you through it. We'll go through, it'll be a lot of fun. You'll be able to craft your story. I'll show you how to sort of um, integrate it into digital storytelling. Um, ecosystem and we'll just go from there so I hope this was fun for you it was really fast but I would love for you to go ahead and do one last reflection for me in it and tell me what are the three takeaways that you got from this session Ooh, three three so six but let's go with three okay three takeaways that you got from this session please Someone says they're looking for the Slido. Oh, okay. It is an art, yeah. Proactive, dynamic, vital, fantastic. Everyone has a story to tell, absolutely. And it matters, everyone's story matters. Can't connect with donors, using, you can connect with donors using your own story. Everyone is involved in telling our joint story, make it personal, powerful, helpful. Your story is more than your resume. Um, that my pa personal passion is my strength and it propels me forward in my effectiveness as a JCC professional. Great presentation. Thank you for making so relatable. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Everything matters. Powerful, helpful. It matters. Everyone is involved in telling our joint story. Um, okay, I think I solved these. Okay, let's go back down. Be bold. Personal story connection, the flow of the ask. Our purpose is the center of how we connect with others. Don't be afraid to share about yourself. Slido is so cool. Yeah, you should definitely use it. Everyone should be a donor. 
meet your donor's needs, important to hone your approach, make sure your approach is concrete, dynamic, and relatable. Thank you. We're all ambassadors, every staff person, absolutely. That my passion, passion for JCCs is a part of my story. I like Slido. Yeah, I love Slido too. Definitely, I'm a big Slido convert myself. So please go ahead and, and use it. You can just go to slido.com and open up an account on your own. Um, it's free. You can get a free version or a paid version for additional um, functionality. Okay, don't be scared of social media. Your story matters and has impact. Everyone's role has a role in fundraising. Your story matters. Google, <laughs> Google tells your life. <laughs> okay, and then what else we have? Use the story things tool. Okay, some people are writing in the chat. So let's see what we're getting in the chat. So Pamela White says, use the storytelling framework to craft your story. Um, okay, and it gives you time to think about your story. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you want to really be deliberate when you know intentional when you're speaking to people. Uh, and it and I listen. I have to tell you the reason why I started doing this. I I would go into meetings and I wouldn't know what to say, right? Because I I can speak forever, as you can see. But if I had to just pitch myself really quickly, it was hard. So I just started starting studying this, and then I figured I could help other people with it. So don't feel like you should already know how to do this. It's great that you now have a tool. Um, and then share my why to engage all stakeholders and find common ground and grow the relationship. It's more than just a job title. Perfect. You just made my day. <laughs> Authentic, honest, personal. Always ask. Yeah, if you don't ask, you don't know what pe people don't know what they want you to what you want them to do. Always ask. And I can tell you, if you look through people's content, they'll do the other pieces or may have a couple of pieces of a couple of the elements of the storytelling tool, but the ask is often missing. And it's like you've told me a great story, but then what should I do? What do you want me to do? I don't know what to do. Just tell people because the people want to know what to do. Um, so I, um, I think we're, and again, we'll keep capturing more of these, but this was so fun. I had a great time with you and I really appreciate you, uh, participating in this with me and I'm going to go ahead and have Coco stop sharing. I'm going to come back to the end of my presentation and I thank you for your participation very, very much. And I really wish you a great rest of ProCon and I look forward to seeing you on May 7th. Please definitely get in touch with me. You can contact me by email or through my website, lizandgonzi.com or info at lizandgonzi.com. And please share your experience on social media at lizandgonzi.com. I will, I will retweet you. I will reshare with you and absolutely get in touch with me on LinkedIn. I want to see your LinkedIn profile and I want to see your LinkedIn profile when you update it with your new story. Thank you very much, Jen and Annette for inviting me. And Annette, thank you so much for being such a great volunteer and for sharing your personal story with us. I'm going to give it back to you, Jen, to close us out. And thank you, Absolutely. Coco. <laughs> Liz, thank you. Thank you. Annette, I can tell you everybody, Annette was really nervous about doing this in front of all of you. Annette, you are a rock star as I knew you totally. would be. Liz, that was amazing. I have to say, uh, I'm somebody who's also quite comfortable speaking anywhere, large groups, small groups, but that question of what do you do when you work for a JCC or you work for JCC Association, there's so much to say and you have just a couple brief minutes to capture somebody's attention. So Liz, I love this framework. Thank you. Lots of questions about how to sign up for May 7th. We will make sure to be sharing that information. We will email that directly to everybody who participated here. It's important that you know, it is not a prerequisite that you were here. It's great that you were here, but you can also invite your colleagues. Liz will do a brief overview again in that session just to catch everybody up, but it's going to be way more hands-on. All of you will have an opportunity to really engage in the tool, um, and we will be sending a link to you. There will be information in program briefs coming out, so please keep your eyes open for that. Um, once again, Liz, Coco, the two of you are masterful at doing a dual <laughs> share. I don't know how you do that. That's like <laughs> Batman and Robin. Like I don't know how you do that together. Um, a couple of very quick reminders, since I probably won't get the, the luxury of seeing all of you face-to-face -face before the end of ProCon. Please, after this session at 145, you, can, you have an hour to once again be with all of our sponsors in our virtual vendor hall. Please go see them. Those of you who are fundraisers, you've heard me say this. We of all people know how important our sponsors are. And one more shout out to Rockstar Annette. It is Annette McCann who secured all of those sponsors and has been stewarding those relationships. So thank you, Annette, for that. If you have a trusted advising session um, coming up at 145, that link will also show up in your personal schedule on SpotMe. I, I want to remind you that you can also connect with Liz and to one another on SpotMe. We encourage you to do that. 
The platform will be open for about a year. Um, so you will be able to continue to go in and connect with everybody. Finally, today at three o'clock Eastern, please let's all be together for the closing session, our final JCC movement moment. There's a tremendous panel ready to speak with all of us and we can't wait to see you there. With a minute to go, I just wanna say thank you once again to Liz and Coco. It was really outstanding. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your ProCon experience and we will see you soon and hopefully on May 7th. Yes, thank you. And they're gonna get the presentation. The presentation and the recording will both be available in the SpotMe platform after the conference is over. So all resources will be there. And if you need, if you need a link to anything, you can reach out to me or Annette, we can certainly get that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.